The Golden Age by Faris Alhajri, Ph.D. A.M. As we enter the new year 2022, we look forward to a year of hope out of hopelessness. Together, we can build a better world and brighter future for our next generations through collaboration rather than competition. I am confident that the latter leads to destruction to both competitors. By collaborating and practicing the three characteristics to embody in our daily activities, I believe we can contribute significantly to making this world a better place, not just for ourselves, our loved ones, our communities, or the affiliation we belong to, but for the entire humanity. Curiosity, how things work and how events take place are genuinely the master keys to a better world. Why? The answer is simple. We are united through the three factors that unite every human being on this planet. 1. Source of creation. 2. Body and soul compositions. 3. Dreams and ambitions. During my childhood, I used to stare at the stars and wish on them repeatedly. When I grow older, I wish to heal my mother and heal the world. I had an intense fear of not being raised by my parents. My siblings and I were divided into two groups to be raised by our uncles to reduce the load on our beloved mother who was frequently readmitted into hospitals. This terrifying incident kept repeating every two to three years throughout the remainder of her life till her ovarian cancer took her away from us. She suffered horribly for 35 years from seven surgical operations in her stomach and was sent to the United Kingdom three times for chemotherapy. I lost hope after failing to fulfill my first childhood dream and ambition. My father had to do everything he could to seek a final cure for his beloved wife. His wisdom in the power of energy healing was neither strong enough to save her life, nor was it strong enough to protect him from his mysterious death ten years before my mother's death. This may sound weird, mysterious death. Well, well, well. It all ended in a tragedy on the day he was invited to meet the late mother of his majesty, the late Sultan. The reason behind his death was unknown. The day before his death, he met her in her palace, then went back to his hotel and slept. In the morning, after taking his breakfast, he passed away. This tragedy was kept hidden by all the family elders, even when I persistently seek the truth. The tragedy in the story was that my younger brother and I never saw our father's last moment before being buried. Both of us were studying in Egypt, and the only available flight back home was a week after his death. We were never informed about his death. We received a call from Omen's ambassador where he asked us to pack our bags because the embassy had already arranged our tickets to fly back without being given the reason. Since then, I proclaimed our father's death mysterious and a family tragedy. File closed. Life must go on. Thus, after my graduation as a quantity surveyor, a branch of construction engineering, I never imagined that being a workaholic could pass my parents' tragedies to me. Having been diagnosed with allergic rhinitis, the pills prescribed by my physician became the fuel that ignited my tragedy. As my health deteriorated with a series of asthma attacks, I was brought a few steps away from the brink of death three times. Prescription drugs just kept fueling the fire and moving the tragedy to a series of migraine and lumbago, low back pain. Reaching the red line alert, I was worried about what was next. The phobia of my parents' tragedies resurfaced. I feared dying early, leaving behind my two kids who desperately needed me. I desperately held onto my grips to not allow history to repeat itself. There came the awakening, appearing like genie from Aladdin's magic lamp, but this one has been unleashed from an intense dream that woke me at 4 o'clock in the morning as a powerful brainstorm. The kitchen experiment not only cleared me of all the incurable chronic diseases, but also changed many people's lives, including my family. The news spread rapidly through words of mouth. Soon after, I started receiving invitations to speak at local schools, places of worship, 
health organizations, hospitals, universities, conferences, etc. All these events drew the attention of the media. The tale spread globally like wildfire. I felt my second childhood dream and ambition turn to reality. On the other hand, the myth led to many challenges as health authorities started to interfere in my business, treating me as a charlatan. The challenge intensified as I began to meet the country's highest rank executives, seeking their supports, but none could be achieved. The threshold of my pain reached its peak when I first met the highest rank health authority. He emphasized that a couple was put in jail due to their use of hydrogen peroxide to heal people. Luckily, I relayed in my book the health risks involved in drinking hydrogen peroxide as a toxic substance. At that moment, I had already started making preparations to move to the United States to fully achieve my ambition. He strongly opposed my idea, saying that he had already instructed the next rank to form and lead a team of physicians and lab technicians to substantiate my claims. After three months of patiently waiting, everything promised was turned down by the second highest rank health authority, saying that his department was only involved in providing health-related services and not conducting research studies. He was required to provide approval from the World Health Organization, WHO. My attempt to convince him that WHO does not deal with individuals, but with governments and organizations failed. This incident coincided with my application to a government research body to fund the clinical research study, which was later rejected because it lacked economic benefits. All doors were closed. The only thing left for me was to pursue my ambitions in the land of opportunity, the United States of America. All my relatives except my immediate family tried to convince me to stay in my country for a decent financial and social life. My eldest uncle approached me as a final attempt saying, we need you. He uncovered that my father's ambition to heal was passed from their father and I inherited the wisdom. I emphasized that my decision resulted from an irrevocable force of nature. I told him that history just repeated itself, from the story of our grandfather emigrating to Africa with his four children facing unknown conditions for months in the middle of the ocean. He conceded tears falling from his eyes. A few years later, I was informed of his death while I was already in the US. May their souls rest in peace. The tremendous technological advances have turned this world into a magnificent world of wonders. But what is happening with humans' health? Why do we see the controversy between the exponential decay of the global healthcare system and the exponential growth of technology? The recent COVID-19 pandemic has divided the world into two major groups, including societies and families. Well, 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 here is the secret key. Dealing with people is worse than a wild horse. Curious? Open your eyes carefully. Look at the mirror. Stare deeply to jump into your soul. Ask the other person facing you in the mirror, yourself, are you invented or created? The answer would be clear. I am created. I am not invented. I am a living organism. My body, my system is created. I rely upon sustaining my perfectionism. I deserve to pursue the same manner I was created. The completion of my creation occurred with the exclusive presence of non-living organisms as essential natural fuels that safeguarded my entire fetal development without any human being interference until I was born. These natural fuels are just everywhere I live, but I have turned myself dunderhead Today, I wake up. My decision is final with no point of return. The entire world is led by elders who have reached and surpassed the golden age. What has been engraved into elders' minds would deny any possible evolution. The older the age, the worse they become than wild horses. The recent series of mutations is changing world history. This solid global storm has already begun. 
Young generations are paved with the red carpet to take over leadership in all fields, including politics, science, academics, etc. Their natural immunity is energized like an atomic fusion of protection against all series of mutations that would continue to evolve. Unfortunately, the tragedy would continue for those who firmly rely on inventions to maintain and safeguard their health. To those in the golden age, they have the opportunity to rescue themselves with their declarations, to hand over their older positions in which they were blindfolded, to uncover the reality as being irrevocably part of the living organisms. They can start immediately to revitalize and energize themselves with the non-living natural creations that their systems rely on to maintain their strength. The time has come to where they hand over their crowns of leadership to the younger generations and retire to live their golden age, reminiscing their younger ages of honeymoon with a different one. The Golden Age To every person, now the ball is in your court. It is your personal decision to define your future. No one can hold you back. Start this year with hope out of hopelessness to pursue your dreams and ambitions by implementing Hakwapathy as a game changer. Written by Ferris Al Hajri, PhD AM, President and Founder, Hakwa Wellness, Blacksburg, Virginia, USA, Hakwa Revitalized Therapy, H A R T, Hakwapathic Medicine, H A M, Hakwapathy. Hakwawellness.com Ferris Alhajri.com Assisted and edited by Case Alhajri, Ferris Alhajri's eldest son.